Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is March 3rd, 2021 and we are in the midst of Women's History Month. Now for the next nine days, I would like to focus on women who have led their countries on the African continent. Now here in these yet to be United States, we are yet to see a woman, a woman at the helm, even though currently there is a woman who is just a heartbeat away from the Oval Office. I've heard many feminists lament that there has not been a female president of, Un of the United States, but many of these same people are unaware that Africa has had a number of female leaders. Today we want to focus on the lady who is listed as the first of such leaders. Sylvie Carnegie was born in 1953 in a family in the countryside of Burundi. Her father was a merchant and her mother cultivated the soil and kept the house. Sylvie was the third of six children. The oldest was a girl and had to help her mother, but Sylvie was allowed to go to a Belgian school for girls run by nuns. She received both primary and second education and afterwards went to the then capital, Bujumbura, to study economics. At 19 years old, she married one of her professors and had four children. Now Sylvie is a Tutsi and her husband is a Hutu. We'll see why that's important later. Right. But she continued her studies after getting married. She was also engaged in the women's organization of the governing Tutsi party and managed to get laws changed and economic and social measures implemented for women. She headed the group in the capital and was a member of the National Executive Board of the Women's Branch. After Kanigi graduated from Burundi University, she got a job in Burundi Central Bank and at the same time taught at the university. In the bank, she was promoted and was given responsibility for research and studies. In 1991, she became advisor to the Prime Minister and was responsible for reducing military expenditure and carrying out an economic reform program. Now there was, a, there was armed conflict between the Hutus and the Tutsis until 1993. Then elections were organized as a transition to democracy. To everyone's great surprise, the leader it's a great surprise. The leader of the opposition, Melchor Ndadayi, was elected president of Burundi, and he appointed a cabinet with two thirds Hutu and one third Tutsi members. Sylvie Kanigi became the prime minister. There was part. This was part of an effort to build unity between Burundi's two ethnic groups. Ndadayi was Hutu and wished to decrease Tutsi hostilities to his administration by appointing a Tutsi as prime minister. Kanegi stated that reconciliation would be her highest priority. On October 21st, however, President Ndadayi and six of his cabinet ministers were killed by Tutsi insurgents. This marked the beginning of the Burundi Civil War, with widespread ethnic violence breaking out. Kanegi and other senior government uh, figures took refuge in the French embassy and survived the chaos. After a few days, Carnegie managed to gather together 15 of the 22 ministers to continue to govern, effectively being the acting president. Her position was bolstered when Pierre Bouyoye and Jean-Baptiste Bagaza, former military presidents, gave their support to her government. In January 1994, Parliament elected Cyprian Enter Riamira, a former agriculture minister, as president for the remainder of, Ended of Endedaya's term. As Enteria Mira was a Hutu, the appointment generated hostilities from many Tutsis. Kanegi, however, recognized Enteria Mira as president but resigned as prime minister when he was inaugurated. She was the object of criticism, attacks, and threats from all sides and was not long before she left the country. In February, she was replaced by Anatole Kenyakiko another Tutsi. In 2004, Kanegi was working with the United Nations Development Program. Uh, she took her talents on the international stage. Now to get a better, a deeper understanding of who Sylvie Kanegi is, there are a number of interviews with her on YouTube. I recommend that you check her out. Okay? Once again, I thank those of you who have subscribed to this channel and those of you who have not yet done so, to do so. I, it would really be helpful to our project. So until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.